Hello, welcome. I'm Pauline from Pauline's Quilt as well, better known as PQW. I'd love to explain to you a lot about the Monopoly Invisible Thread. Now, I love this thread, but I know a lot of people have challenges with it. It's not a nylon thread. It's not going to melt. It's not going to jam up in your machine. So I'm going to show you how to set the thread up in your machine, how to tension your machine perfect, and how to love the thread like I do. We can use this thread in the top with another th different thread in the bobbin. We can use this thread in the top and the bobbin, or vice versa. We can use any combination of threads once we know how to set the machine up perfect. I use it when I do my quilts quilt as you go. I've got a variegated thread on the top and I have the monopoly thread in my bobbin. But a lot of times when I'm top stitching in that, I'll have it in the top and the bobbin. Now, a lot of people buy it and they say, oh, I have thread tension, I have all sorts of problems. Well, let's, let's get rid of all of that. Let's get rid of the, the, the challenges that you could have. Now, one really important little feature I'm going to show you is when people get this thread, they usually just take it out of the packet. They don't realise that down underneath here, there is a little bit of gauze. And I know this is a bit hard to see. I call this a gauze jacket. That is in your packet for a very specific reason. When we work with a really, really fine thread like this Monopoly is, if I don't have a little bit of gauze like this on it, I can expect the thread to come off my machine or off the spool too fast and the thread will get caught up underneath the spool. It'll jam up and then all of a sudden your machine won't be um, doing the right thing. So once you take this out of the packet and undo the thread for the first time, please get your gauze jacket and put it on the spool and leave that on there now permanently till there's no thread left. The same when you buy the big spools. And I must let you know that these big spools are now on our website. It, it's an expensive thread to buy, to buy it in bulk like this. But if you're going to use it a lot like we do, it is the cheapest way to buy it. We've only got limited um, cones of this on our website at the moment, but have a look around. And we've got the, the small spools of it too on our website. It's been very, very hard to get, but we've just got a huge stock of it in, so we're right to go. But when, I just want to show you some of the places that I've used it in my quilts, um, just to let you know how brilliant it is for my quilt as you go techniques, because I'm a person that um, loves to quilt my background fabrics first. So just this little piece we've got here, we've quilted the background first. Then we've done some gorgeous applique over the top. Now, regardless of whether I use a straight stitch or whether I do what I've done here, I'll use a blanket stitch, particularly a blanket stitch. If I was to put, like I have here, a variegated embroidery thread on the top of my machine, if I put a regular thread to match this fabric on the, in my bobbin, when I do the blanket stitch, I'm going to find that my blanket stitch will show up on the back of the quilt. Now, if you've looked at the um, sewing that you've done at the back when you've used a blanket stitch or a buttonhole stitch on your machine, it's not a nice look at the back. It kind of crosses over a little bit. It doesn't look nice. We don't want to see that on the back of our quilt when we put our quilts together, quilt as you go, because we've quilted first through the whole three layers. Having the monopoly thread on the bobbin, you don't see the blanket stitch come up at all. Even if I use a plain fabric, I still don't see the blank the thread on the back. Now, this is a little cushion cover I've made here. I'm just going to turn it over and open this out because we've used a plain homespun on the back. And where we've stitched around all these applique shapes, we've used a straight stitch on the machine, but that thread has just blended in beautifully. I, I could have looked around and gone out and purchased an exact matching thread, or I could have used a contrast thread, but I just find the Monopoly just works brilliantly. So when I stitched this at the front, I had the Monopoly thread in the top of my machine and I had it in the bobbin. And it just works wonders. Here, when we've done this little table runner, I used the Monopoly in the top 
and the bobbin when I did the quilting. I used it when I stitched all my appliques in place and I've used it when I stitched my sashing in place for my quilt as you go and I've machine stitched the binding down with it in the top and bobbin. So I didn't have to change my threads in the making of this whole project. It saves me so much money and so much time just using the one thread for everything I do. I don't piece my quilts with it, but I use it to stitch down bindings. I use it for top stitching. I use it for applique. Like with this gorgeous little piece here, here we've used a darker thread to highlight the leaves, but we had the monopoly thread in the bobbin and it doesn't show up on the back. We've done some blanket stitch around some of the shapes. We don't see the blanket stitch on the back. I just want to show you this gorgeous little quilt here. This is our Black Butterfly Kisses quilt. This is this gorgeous pattern that we have for this quilt. It's a beautiful, beautiful pattern. But because we'd quilted the fabric first and then come back and done the applique, we used a lovely um, brownie colour thread. This is a rosette thread that we had in the top and we had the monopoly thread in the bobbin. Now, when I turn this over, I'll just try and open it out a bit so the camera can pick it up. We don't see the blanket stitch on the back. It just, oops, bit of thread. It just blends in with all of these multicolors that I've got on the back of the quilt. So it is a brilliant thread, and I really want to teach everybody how to use it. Now, when I first got this thread, I had no idea how to put it onto my machine because it really doesn't come with any instructions. So when you purchase it off us, we give you, I, I write out an instruction sheet so that you know exactly how to do it. But if you watch what I'm going to show you, how to set it up on your machine, you'll know exactly how to do it. I do use the top stitch titanium needles because I want a, a an eye of the needle that's quite large. I want a good needle with a sharp point. So titanium ones are a much sharper point. They keep their point much longer than a nickel plated needle. I use size 80 top stitch needle and they've got a very big eye so I don't get any heat friction of the thread running through the eye that it may split. So now let's go to the machine. I've got the machine all set up here. I'm going to teach you how to wind your bobbin properly with this thread and I'm going to show you how to thread your machine up with it. Now, don't ever worry if you're going to use a regular thread on the top and a um, monopoly thread in the bobbin, you should get perfect tension. If you're going to have a regular thread in the bobbin and the monopoly on the top, you should be fine. So long as you follow the steps I'm going to give you. If you've got monopoly in the bobbin and the top, you will be fine. So I've undone my thread. And I've already put the jacket on top. So I've got the little gauze jacket on top. So I'm going to thread it up on the machine so the thread comes off the back of the spool. Take the little spool cap off. Make sure you put a spool cap on. Make sure the thread is coming off, off through here. And you can see how it's just lifting up that jacket, but it's still coming out from underneath. We're going to wind this around our bobbin. And we'll come on around. Now, we don't want to wind our bobbin fast because if we're going to wind the bobbin fast, we can expect the thread to stretch and that can throw your tensions out. So we're going to just put our foot on the foot pedal lightly so we wind it, not, not really slow, but at a medium speed. So we'll just put this across and we'll get it started. So I'm just going, oops, there goes my gauze. Hang on. I didn't check that right. So if we don't put it on right, it will pop off. So that's not nice that that happened, but it's a good thing that happened. So I'll just hold it to get started. Uh, there we go. We're all caught up. Sorry, I'm going to have to re-thread this because I've got it caught up under, the under that gauze. So there we go. Now we're right. Oops. Hang on. You know, all things fail. Start again. And I don't know why that's popping off. Probably because I was pulling it out and stretching it. So when I put it back on, let's just 
pat this down so it goes back to the shape that it should be because I think I'd stretch the gauze too much. Right. So let's just undo this. So it's not only you that has trouble with things, I sometimes can have it too. Right, now we're right. So I just, I'd stretch that gauze too much by pulling it to show you. So once I settle the gauze back into the shape of the thread, it's right. So I'm just filling it at a slower speed, not too fast. Now, it's very important that you don't thread, uh, you don't fill your spool complete capacity. Because if I just keep winding this till I fill this bobbin up, I'm going to have too much thread on the bobbin. And when I try to get it off my bobbin winder, that little hole in the middle, too much thread on your bobbin can shrink that little hole. And it can be near impossible to get your bobbin off the bobbin winder. And if you're using a machine that has a plastic bobbin, you put too much thread on a plastic bobbin, the bobbin can explode. It can just go pop as you're winding it because that centre hole can't hold all of that thread. So I'm just about at, at um, halfway. You can see the threads just coming off underneath that gauze nicely. And that's a very important part of getting this bobbin tension perfect on your machine. Wind it slower, only half fill it. There we go. So now we'll put the bobbin in the bobbin case and the bobbin came off the bobbin winder nicely, but I know if I had to fill that up completely, I wouldn't have been able to get it off the bobbin winder. And I'm only telling you that because when I first started using this thread, I filled my bobbin up completely. And I just couldn't get it off the bobbin winder. And I had to stand for about half an hour and pull thread off the bobbin to be able to get it off this winder. So be very careful not to overfill your bobbin. Now we're going to put this in our bobbin case. I'm not going to adjust the bobbin tension at all. And then we're going to thread up the machine. So we'll just pop this in. Now we're just going to put it in normally like I put any thread in my bobbin. I know I've got good tension on the bobbin. Everything's nice there. We'll just pop that in. Then you just thread your machine up normally. Have your pressure foot up. Don't have the pressure foot down. Have it up because you want to have your tension discs opened. We'll come up from the back of the machine. Come over to the front. Thread it through all of your tensions. Now before you thread the thread into the needle, please put your pressure foot down. Put the pressure foot down. Pull your thread so you know you've got tension because you've got to make sure you get this thread into those two tension discs. If you thread your machine with your needle up, it'll just, it could pull out of that tension disc. So put your pressure foot down that now has locked the thread into the tension. And you can feel that it's locked in because you've got that pressure on there. Now, it's, it can be difficult to thread through the eye of the needle, but using the titanium top stitch needles with that big eye, I find it goes through the eye quite nicely for me. I'll just get it cut here. It just pops through that hole for me. Then we're ready to start sewing. Now, if you have trouble with your tensions um, because you may be using a different combination of thread, to, you might be using monopoly in the bobbin and a regular thread in the top or vice versa. If you start sewing and you haven't got a perfect tension, just follow this little tip that I'm going to give you now. Now, if you've got my... Um, how to get started with free motion quilting booklet inside there I tell you how to tension your machine perfect or if you've got my let me just grab it either one of these two books this is my getting started with free motion quilting booklet 
But the most detail I can give you about how to set your machine your machine up with this thread or any combination is my Quilt As You Go handbook. Now, on page 26 and 27, I dedicated two pages on how to tension your machine perfect. So I'd like you to read that and learn how to put any combination of thread onto your machine. Absolutely brilliant. It works for me every every single time. And it's all about when we're starting, when we're threading our machine, if we've got a tension problem. And one little tip is please never pull your thread backwards through the machine. Always cut your thread at the top and pull your thread forward through the machine. Your thread's never meant to go backwards through that tension disc. Now we're going to adjust the tension. I hardly ever touch my bobbin tension. I always work with the top tension. So if I'm worried about a combination of threads or I'm having trouble, I put my top tension dial to zero. Now, if you don't know where your tension dial is on your machine, please read your manual because there's, some machines have a lot of dials and I find that some people use the wrong dial to adjust their tensions and then they wonder why it doesn't work. This is my top tension dial on my Benina up the top. I've put it on zero. Now we've got two little discs that sit back to back, like two plates sitting back to back. Sometimes when we thread our machines with those discs closed, the thread gets caught in between the tension discs and, and doesn't go right to the back where it belongs. So by putting it on zero, we've opened up the discs. Now we're going to thread the machine up and over. We've got the pressure foot up. Just thread it normally. Now, I'm not threading the needle at this stage. I'm going to put the top, my pressure foot down and I'm putting the top tension dial to three. Now, I can feel I've got good tension on that and I'll thread the machine. I would then start sewing and I... So for a little bit, and if I'm using a blanket stitch, I would, um, you know, test it out. I'd look at the top and the bottom. Oops, I've got to get the thread through the eye of the needle. I would check the top and the bottom of my work. If I had the top thread coming through to the bottom, I would loosen the top tension off a bit and vice versa. Just work, your tension dial is on your machine to use. I find a lot of people are very scared of adjusting their tensions. Please don't be scared. If you follow those instructions, and there's more instructions in my Quilt As You Go handbook on how to tension your machine to suit any combination of threads. If nothing else you learn from my book, you'll learn how to tension your machine perfect. And I've been able to help out thousands of people that always say, when I'm teaching my quilting classes, I have so many people say, oh, my machine only likes the same thread top and bottom. I have to use exactly the same thread. I don't think that's true. I think if we learn how to tension our machine perfect, we can use any combination of thread. So that's just a little bit about how to teach you to use the Monopoly thread. And, you know, we have lots of other videos on our YouTube channel. So watching on there, please subscribe by hitting that bell so that you'd be able to um, get notification every time that we put out a new video and a new little hint and tips for you to be able to learn how to get perfection like we do here at PQW. Have a look at our website because we've got the small spools of thread on our website. We've got a few of the large spools. We don't have a lot of these. We've got our Quilt As You Go handbook. We've got our Getting Started with Free Motion Quilting booklet to teach you a lot about free motion quilting. And then we've got our wonderful um, Titanium's Top Stitch Needle. So have a look around, see what you might need that would help you in your quilting journey. If you haven't seen our Butterfly Kisses quilt, it's absolutely a beautiful, beautiful quilt um, for you to get started on. You're going to learn how to use all these combination of threads. You're going to learn how to do your quilt, quilt as you go. So till we meet again, happy stitching, happy tensioning your machines and have fun. And I have a lot of people that phone us up and ask for Monopoly thread. It looks the same, but it's hyphenated. Okay, so it's Monopoly. 
and I think you will love it like I do. So thank you for joining me. Bye for now.